Here we're looking at gunshot residue. Now you may not think initial fire, a uh, bullet is fired, how much residue is actually exposed around the gun, but this kind of freeze frame high speed shot shows the bullet in motion, shows the fire still coming out of the barrel, and does show the residue. Now keep in mind this is a revolver here, so there can be a little bit more because we have that firing chamber curve right in the cylinder here. So gunshot residue, a lot of times abbreviated GSR, is a mixture of material that originates from the firing of a gun, and it's residue that is deposited on the hands and clothes of someone who discharges the firearm, and really anything nearby. Residue can be found on both the firearm and the individual. And this again shows another revolver, kind of shows the angle of projection of that residue. And here's the bullet, again, caught right in motion right there. So it gives you a good idea of just where this may be deposited. Now, gunshot residue is principally composed of burnt and unburnt particles from the explosive primer and the propellant. There's also the possibility of fragments of the bullet cartridge case and the firearm present. So it's not just necessarily just the propellant that we see here with the smoke. There could also be a chance that there could be some of that cartridge case, some of the actual bullet component. Um, so these are other things to be mindful of when you're evaluating uh, a scene for gunshot residue. Now the collection of said gunshot residue, uh, the process in general, we're looking at investigators should use gloves to limit potential contamination of the scene because we are looking at something that is very fine and is found in very small quantities. Investigators should test the clothing and skin of people for gunshot residue to determine if they were near the gun when it was discharged. Because as you saw with those images, you can see here, it's not just around the gun, there is some uh, expansion of that, at least near the site of that initial explosion. The gunshot residue can travel about over three to five feet from the gun or about one to one and a half meters away from the gun. Uh, but keep in mind at those first kind of ranges of that, only very few trace particles might be present. So it's going to be very hard to find those. That's just why it's important to try to pinpoint where the gun was actually fired. Now in that gunshot residue, and the, if you go through and you go bring it into a lab and analyze it, we're well, going to be looking for uh, elements such as barium and antimony. These are typically found at high levels. You want to use a powerful um, microscope. In this case, a scanning electron microscope can help kind of look for that um, residue that might be present. And there's also a chemical test to determine what elements might be present. And making the match, well, the, if the ammunition used oh, was specifically tagged in some way with special elements, it's possible to know the cartridge used to produce the gunshot residue. Uh, using scanning electron uh, microscopes or dispersive x-ray spectrometry uh, can also help or aid in this process. The whole goal of going through this um, process is to match the bullet to the gun to be able to try to determine or start developing a links of what occurred at the crime scene to what materials were used at the crime scene.